And in which war did you serve? The first, Second World War. And what branch of service? Army, infantry. And what was your highest rank? PLC. And what general locations did you serve in? I went to, from Fort Devens, Massachusetts, to Spartanburg, South Carolina, Spartanburg, South Carolina, to Camp Shanks, New York, Camp Shanks, New York, to somewhere in England. They didn't tell us where we were. And then I went from Normandy, northern France, and Germany. And were you drafted or did you enlist? I'm very confused about that because they told me I celebrated my 18th birthday in France. So I, I don't, I, I'm really confused about it. And where were you living when you enlisted at the time? With uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Do you recall the dates? No. And why did you join? Well, to go get the bastards. Why did you pick the army to serve? Pardon? Why did you pick the army? Why did I pick the army? As opposed to the Navy or... Well, I tried the Navy, but I couldn't get in the Navy because I'm colorblind. Uh... And, of course, the Air Force I didn't have the education for. So it's just a matter of that was what was left. What were your first days in the service like? My first days in service? Yeah, what were they like? When I went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, to, that's my first day was at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Well... The first day that I got there, they said, you know, you can send these clothes home. And they gave me a uniform. And I never forget the supply sergeant or whoever was supplying it. You want to send these home? I said, yeah. <laughs> and I got my first suit I ever had in my life. I had a jacket. I had everything. I had clothes I never had before. I thought it was pretty good. How did it feel to be in the Army? Good. Uh, tell us about your uh, what boot camp was like for you and what training you had to go through. And, and for service? For yeah. What was, boot, what was training camp like for you? What was it like to me? Yeah. What did they have you do? Um, what was it? Was it fun? Was it difficult? Well, it was difficult, but at the same time, you had companions that you became associated with, and that became, to me, a very, very good thing to have some buddies around, you know? And, uh, well, the... the some of the courses that we went through were kind of scary, especially the, the one at night with machine gun fire over your head crawling on barbed wire. Uh, <clears throat> that, 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 <laughs> that made a man out of you. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I tell you one thing I hated though, was I hated those goddamn fried oysters on Friday. Was that every Friday? It seemed like it to me then. And I had an allotment going home. So shit, I never had any money. You know? But I always scraped in enough to get a couple of beers on Friday. So yeah. it made the oysters bearable. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember any of your instructors in uh, basic training? Any of my what? Instructors. Uh, there was one, a, a Polish sergeant, Sergeant Risk. I can't remember whether it's Risk or Risky. I mean, he, he, he was tough, but he was fair. And uh, 
the one I do remember the the most is I'm sorry. Do you want to take a quick break? And, uh, I love it. My last lieutenant is Lieutenant James R. Carpenter in his uh, yellow book over there in, the, in that frame that lists his name and his address. And when I got back to the States, after I'd been wounded, I wanted to contact him, and I found out he'd been killed, and that that hurt me the most. I had friends that were killed, but it didn't matter. I mean, it, but he did matter. He was he was beside me, or I was beside him. I'm receiving that silver star. That. He was just such a great guy, a great guy. Uh, and I remember my my foot foxhole buddy was uh, uh, Billy Jackson from New Jersey. Uh, there was one that we called. Big Stoop, who was kind of out of the hills of Kentucky, and you know he didn't, he wasn't too bright. You know, I can remember. I I can't get it in order, you know, but I can remember. going down a road and the German plane came over and was strafe strafing us and General Patton came out stood in the middle of the road and he says, Get your fucking ass moving, you know? And I admired uh, Jackson. Yeah. Jackson, was that his name? Am I saying that right? Am I saying Jackson? Yeah. I admired him. He stood on the banks of a river, and I think that it was the Moselle River, or the Meuse, one of those, and we were to cross. And he let us know that a lot of us would be coming back. Uh, but we did it. We survived it, you know. Laying in a ditch with water running through it, but it was like a brook. And the guy next to me got hit. And I tried to grab him, and I just couldn't do it. He just floated away. And there was the time when we got to Metz or to Reims. George Patton, that's, yeah. Uh, Patton ran out of gas. And so we were held up there. We were able to pitch pup tents. And uh, I remember we all got pretty drunk in German wine that was saved for the Germans. A kid came out of the out of the, the woods, a young guy. And uh, we drank champagne and this kid came walking out of the woods. Uh, and he wanted to surrender. We just told him, hey, go down there, you know. We weren't going to be bothered. I mean, we've had enough of that shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you may have to prod me some. Uh, after boot camp, where was the first place you went? 
Camp Shanks, New York. A debarking place. And from there we went to the ships. In the ships we went to shore. I don't remember where we landed in England. But I don't. I, I thought it was Scotland that we landed at, but I'm not sure. Uh, well, that, that, that's but then from England. I know I went to to Plymouth. A few, uh, I can't remember, a certain length of time before we left uh, Plymouth to go across to Normandy. When you first arrived in, in England, what were your impressions when you first arrived there? A hilly country. Yeah. That's where they put us in the hills. Mm. Yeah, it was hilly. Yeah. How long were you in England for? Huh? How long were you in England for? From April until Ju uh, uh, June. So I don't know what we're about to the, the date of April, but it was April and June. And uh, during that period of time, what were you doing? They, uh, training. Training. Had us running all over the place, and getting prepped up to, to go. They, uh, that we weren't very happy there. And I know that we were, were getting disgusted because we were waiting, waiting, you know. And uh, a couple of us decided, well, we've had enough of this shit, so we took off. Well, the MPs picked us up, brought us back, and they told us. You got a choice. You can either join the Rangers, or you can break rock. I said, "Oh, I want to. I want to join the Rangers." Oh, gee, yeah, well, hey, you know, get that. <laughs> I couldn't take it, and so they put me back breaking rock. Um, so in England, what was a typical typical day like for you? What was what was a typical day like in England for you? Uh, all right, we'd wake up in the morning, it'd probably be raining, it usually was. You'd go down and stand in line for chow, you'd come back from chow, you'd go to some kind of a class or something. Um, and I, we sat in the... We sat and made some jewelry out of English coins. It, we take like a, a half dollar and pound it until it was run, cut out the center of it. And we made jewelry in between times of being bored. You go to bed and it was still like like this out, still white. And uh, so from England, you then went to the part of Egypt. Well, <coughs> We went from England mm -hmm. <coughs> to Normandy, and uh, we land. Now, there's a difference of opinion here, but I know that you know, we landed on the seventh. I know that we we were, we were on the water on the sixth, and Jesus, you know, you forget things. The goddamn boat was going like this. Oh, you know, oh. The seas were rough, and uh, they, the English did the best they could, but they filled with boiled potatoes and boiled cabbage. And you couldn't wait to get off the freaking boat. The food was so bad in here. Uh, and uh, then we landed, and we started walking in shore, in from shore, and there was a leveling, uh, leveling. Well, there was a a, a, a walk. <clears throat> we came over the side of the, the ship. I remember that because they were going down the landing net, 
and we got in there around noontime. We gathered in a a little circle. That was a, well, I think, looking back, we had K rations, I think, for 10 men or 6 men. I can't remember which. But we found a spot to sit. And we sat and started to eat the K rations. And the guy over there took a shell and killed him. Uh, so we never sat in a group anymore. We always, you know, get away from me, get away from me, you know. And uh, that taught us some lessons. They were so far apart that they were still sniping at us and so on. But the heavier fighting, of course, was on, on uh, uh, the other, other part. The, but the, the hedgerows were horrible. They were just killing fields. And yet the road, you had a narrow road, you had a drainage ditch here and a drainage ditch here, and you had a, you had a high wall there. And, and you tried to go down there, and of course they had everything lined up. It was pitiful to see the cows that were killed and the gliders that came in, and you know, men still hanging out. Of, Stupid bastards. Huh? Yeah. What a waste. So after the initial landing, how long were you in transport? What was that? How long were you in France after the initial landing? How long was... How long were you in France? In the trench? France. In France? <clears throat> well, you learn very quickly not to become good friends. Uh, I mean, you'd be there one day laughing and joking and swapping cigarettes and and you you know he was dead i mean uh christ in 17 18 years old and see the guy right next to you get shot to the head and you, you never you want to forget i can't forget it you know yeah and, uh, but I blocked it out enough to be to be all right, I guess. I, I can remember when I came back that I <clears throat> took a job as a apprentice dental technician, <clears throat> and I was in Hartford, and I came out of the Hartford Brown Thompson building, and some guy was working in the street with a Break breaking pavement. It brought back everything back. Yeah. Like the running high, yeah. I don't know what people thought that then, but but I was able to put a lot of that behind me. And I've 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 done good. I've done good with it. It hasn't bothered me too much. Some nights I don't sleep too good because of it, but that's that's few and far between. Yeah, maybe it feels good to get all this off my chest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What else can I tell you? So, well, in France, what happened after the initial landing? All right. Yeah. Well, we after we had that. I killed up at lunch. Uh, it was just a matter of pushing ahead day after day after day to try to get the enemy out of there. 
uh, I mean, it was just, just going on and on, you know, doing what you could, killing what you could, trying to stay alive, you know. Uh, I mean, there were there was times that we were happy about it, about things, you know. But I look back. I say, how the hell can I be happy about killing somebody else's son or daughter, you know, or son or, or whatever, you know? I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Not at all. But we've been doing it for how many years? You know, we're going to continue to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I wished I could bring some of those people back that I was with to talk to them, but I can't. You know. no. Do you recall any specific missions in France? Yeah. The one where The only one I th can think of <clears> that I did win the Silver Star, but it's so foggy to me. It was a a building. Uh, we they told us it was a schoolhouse or it was anywhere. It was a big, strong building, <clears throat> and <clears throat> we were getting we were getting killed in nets. And uh, we said, well, we got to do something. So we, I had a, I, I, I had a radio and I had a telephone, and the lieutenant was the, the carpenter. And we, on the telephone, I could hear Germans talking. And they had an observation post. <clears throat> which we which we found to be the one that was holding us up. The lieutenant and I went across this alleyway like thing. And uh I could hear the, the Germans inside talking and so on. And I told we 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 found them. Now we got to get the hell out of here. And it was we. I, I told him to go first. And he ran back across. And then I directed the. It was a 155 or a 105 howitzer to shoot at the where I, where I was. No, and the horse was there. I don't know. I could almost hear that gun go off. You know, but I don't know. Uh, and I found a German tank that was coming through, and I had a a buddy load the bazooka for me, and I I hit the tank. And then ran like hell downstairs because they were going to fire back, you know. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't coordinate. It doesn't make sense. It just, I just can't put it into a package. I mean, things pop up. Things pop out. You know. After France, we we went into Germany, and uh, we had a, a a a night attack, and my buddy and I were in a field, and the Germans came in with a tank. And they'd go along the edge of the field because they knew that's where we'd be. And they'd spin the tank to try to get rid of you. 
And, and I told my buddies, we got to get the hell out of here. So we got up and we, we started to run to where we thought was the rear. And uh, that, that, I don't know whether that was a good move or a bad move. It wounded him and uh, demoralized me. Anyway, I helped him and he got shot. Shot in the legs a number of times. I helped him back to the aid station. And uh, I, I somehow or other, since the next morning, I'm sitting there. I says, "Where the where the hell are all the guys?" And there was none of my group left. Uh, and uh, what happened then? And God forgive me for killing any of them. I'm sure that there's soldiers there that that felt the same way I have. I'm sure of it. I mean, this business of running in and stabbing everybody and shooting everybody with a band, that, that's bullshit. You, know, you just wanted to get the hell out of there alive and go on with your life. Yeah. 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 Well, then that night I was night I got hit in November and they took me back. <clears throat> the battle of Bul the bulge opened and the hospital where I was in in England got cleaned out. Anybody that could carry a rifle got got kicked out, you know. Yeah. That's about the end of my story. You said that you were awarded the Soldier Star. Was that for when you were first going into Germany? I, th I think it was when I pinpointed the observation point. There's something about it that I know I made the call and I could see the gun. And a lot of it just appeared. A lot of it comes back in the fillets gap, though. We came along the, the ridge and looked down into the fillets gap, and we had the Germans trapped. And they just went in there and pounded the shit out of them. I mean, uh, you know, you see all the dead horses and the dead men. The hardest part, of course, is seeing dead people. You know, and you walk by it. The first time you see it, you're horrified. Next time you see it, yeah. It hardens to, to something you can't get used to. You know, so. Yeah. I hope they never have to go through it again, but they will. They will. Those sons of bitches in Washington will, will go through it again. You, you were awarded two Purple Hearts. You already explained how you were where you're born. Well, we were in a in a dancing in a field, and. Uh, uh, we we got uh, we got shelled by German uh, Sherman, German shelling. I got hit in the shoulder, which was wasn't wasn't much, you know. But then the other time it was this and this this took care of everything, you know. Did you were you able to stay in touch with your family at all? Was I able to stay in touch with your family while you were overseas? Well, we had V-mail, but yeah. yeah. I had a sister that I was in contact with, and my mother, but that was it, you know. I can't remember my mother ever writing to me, but I remember my sister. Yeah. And 
Betty, my, my wife, uh, I heard from her a couple of times. Were you adequately supplied while you were overseas? Pardon? Were you adequately supplied while you were in the field? Yeah, yeah, wherever I was, yeah, I've got no complaints about, about the, I was maybe, maybe you went hungry for a, a day or so, but that was nothing, you know. How did you handle all of the stress and pressure while you were over there? Did I? How did you handle the stress and pressure while you were there? I didn't have a problem. Except with that second lieutenant. Oh, and then the, yeah, they, we had moved forward and I was asleep under a, under a truck. And uh, he, he said he was going to court martial me. Maybe that has something to do with it too, you know. So I don't know how that turned out. I didn't get court martialed. <clears throat> how did how did people entertain themselves? How did people entertain themselves? Trying to think. Well, some of us played cards once in a while, and most of us just went looking around to the last place. Yeah, the last place. I slept was in the, I think it was the cement factory cellar or something. You know, I mean, we didn't we didn't sleep in beds, of course. We slept in holes in the ground or whatever you could find, you know. Now, I, I saw that you kept a journal while you were overseas. Is there a particular reason you, you kept one? No, I ju just did. I, I just, I've got no explanation for it. When your service ended, where were you? When I was mustered out or? Yeah, what were your final days in service like? Uh, July 23rd, Ashford General Hospital. My birthday. Yeah. What was what was your homecoming like? Nothing unusual. I came home. Uh, I still wore the uniform, and then Betty, who was was not my wife then, but Betty helped me to get some clothes. Of course, I picked out the craziest suit you ever saw in your life, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, it was no big deal. I mean, uh, nobody had to come up to me and say, thank you for your service. I mean, we just, we accepted it, you know. No, I mean, uh, see, it wasn't, it wasn't like when the younger guys came home. I mean, when you came when you came home from Vietnam and so on, you know, the feeling was, get the hell out of it, don't bother me, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was no big deal. I mean, I went in there, I did what I was supposed to do, and I came home. Now, you said you went back to work once you got home? 
<laughs> yeah. I was a runner for G Fox, the uh, uh, department store, before I went in. It was to fill in for the time I went in. So I went back to go to work. Well, that foot bled so bad I couldn't do it. You know, from the walk. So that was out of it. So a friend that ran a drugstore hired me for a little bit. And uh, that that's what I did. I I worked in the drugstore. And then there was a guy that ran a uh, a used uh, 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 used junk store. I worked for him for a little bit. You know, didn't do much. And then they offered me the opportunity to come under Public Law 16. And I don't know how that happened. But anyway, I got onto it and I went into the dental technician apprenticeship program. Yeah, I spent 60 years there. Yeah, so that was very uneventful. Very uneventful. How was your, uh, your military experience influenced the way you look at war? What was it? How was your military experience influenced the way you look at war? How's How did war change the way you thought about it? Well, when I first thought about it, you know, we were supermen. We can lick the world. And uh, do it now. I, I think it's so foolish. I was all for it for, for kicking Hitler's ass. But, and I was all for killing Hadam Saddam. I mean, I'm, I'm all for, you know, that's what confuses the mind so much, I think. I'm all for that one thing and against it or another. I mean, the, the killing of, of Osama bin Laden, that, that, that to me was great. They should have done earlier than that. And some great men were involved in trying to do that. And so, I mean, our politicians and our government was against it. Yeah, well, it happened, you know, which was good. But it doesn't seem to solve too much. You put down one and another one comes up. Did you join any veteran associations or organizations? I joined the Massachusetts American Legion because of a buddy of mine that was in service was there. Yeah. But I have, I'm not, not a real deep social person. I mean, I, well, I had what I wanted. I had my horses. I had my wife. I had, a, I had a piece of land. You know, see, when I was, when I was little, well, when I was a baby, my father left my mother with five kids. And. So anything I've got, I've, I've worked for, and I've been proud to have. I haven't depended upon anybody else to, for it, you know. Of course, having, having a wife, a piece of land, and a daughter, nobody could have anything better. Nobody. I've never, could never have anything better than what I've had. Never. Yeah, very, very peaceful. And if I love my horses, you're supposed to look up there when I say that. <laughs> I can, yeah. So you you had a friend in Massachusetts from your time in the in the in the army. 
I met him after I uh, got out of the army. We met after the army. He was a blacksmith, and he uh, was a member of the a writing club that we were associated with, and we were had the we uh, well. Yeah, we, I mean, because we, we just partied together. It was, yeah. How did, uh, how did your service affect your life? Well, I don't know whether it disaffected or not, but it, it made a man of me. It did, did it? Made a man out of me. It was, it was, it was good for me. It was good for me, because when I was Hartford growing up, Hartford was not a very nice place, and uh, it kept me out of trouble. I, I know I'd have been in trouble because that's the way we lived, you know. Yeah. But I, I think it I think it really, really changed my life around to to make me a, a decent person. And when I came out of the army, I think that the education that the government supplied me with well, was the best. It kept kept me. I mean, because I was, I was going, like Mitchell, I was going with a round, round crowd. It was a gangster in Hartford, Tony Tazaro. And you come out, you know, hey, you're king shit. You know, you've, you've held machine guns and you've, you've done this, and you know, hey, I'm king shit. You know, I go knock off a bank, you know. But... It changed me. It changed me altogether. Did you go to uh, dental school because of the GI Bill? Yeah. And I had a buddy that was uh, also um, in military, but he never left the States. But, but that was all right. I mean, and I think one of the things that helped me too was I became a Mason. And being a Mason, and you know, you abide by their bylaws and, and so on, it, 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 it helps. It really does, yeah. You know, you're to, the whole, my uncle, who was also a Mason, Said it was hard at times to do the right thing, but you had to do the right thing. And Masons kept me on that line. You know, I mean, I would never cheat you or anybody. I, I just wouldn't do it. You know. Uh, yeah. Was there anything else that you would like to add, or that we didn't discuss, or that you wanted to talk about? Well, I think more psychological training should be done before you send somebody over to Afghanistan to get his ass blown off. I mean, that 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 is not not good, not good at all. Now, give them more training before they go. Not on how to how to kill people, but how to be a decent human being. Were you emotionally prepared for for going over to overseas to fight? Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I thought I had enough, but I didn't. I, mean, I I thought I thought it was I thought it was could have been more more training. Yeah. I would like to thank you.
for your service and thank you for the time that you took to to, to perform. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, it was my pleasure. Uh, it's 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 been I hope to get this off my my ch ch chest. Yeah.